Good afternoon and welcome back to The Longing, where we are once again going to continue reading Aesop's Fables. We're getting pretty close to the end of the book. Um, a lot of them I don't really understand. Um, they don't really make that much sense, but then again it was written quite a long time ago. So, the two soldiers and the robber. Two soldiers travelling together were set upon by a robber. One of them ran away, but the other stood his ground, and laid about him so lustily with his sword that the robber was fain to fly, and leave him in peace. When the coast was clear, the timid one ran back, and, flourishing his weapon, cried in a threatening voice, Where is he? Let me get at him, and I'll soon let him know whom he's got to deal with. But the other replied, You are a little late, my friend. I only wish you had backed me up just now, even if you had done no more than speak for I should have been encouraged, believing your words to be true. As it is, calm yourself and put up your sword. There is no further use from it. You may delude others into thinking you're as brave as a lion, but I know that at the first sign of danger you run away like a hare. The lot. Oh. oh, I forgot to turn idle reading off. I'd literally just turned the page. The Lion and the Wild Ass <clears throat> a, a lion and a wild ass went out hunting together. The latter was to run down the prey by his superior speed, and the former would then come up and dispatch it. They met with great success, and when it came to sharing the spoil, the, the lion divided it into three equal portions. I will take the first, said he, because I am king of the beasts. I will also take the second, because as your partner I am entitled to half of what remains. And as for the third, well unless you give it up to me and take yourself off pretty quick. To. The third, believe me, will make you feel very sorry for yourself. Might makes right. What? <laughs> the man and the satyr. A man and a satyr became friends and determined to live together. All went well for a while until one day in winter time, the satyr saw the man blowing out on his hands. Why do you do that? He asked. To warm my hands, said the man. That same day, when they sat down to supper together, they each had a steaming hot bowl of porridge, and the man raised his bowl to his mouth and blew on it. Why do you do that? asked the satyr. To cool my porridge, said the man. The, the satyr got up from the table. Goodbye, said he. I'm going. I can't be friends with a man who blows hot and cold with the same breath. <laughs> the Image Seller a certain man made a wooden image of mercury, and exposed it for sale in the market. As no one offered to buy it, however, he thought he would try to attract a purchaser by proclaiming the virtues of the image. So he cried up and down the market, A god for sale, a god for sale, one who'll bring you luck and keep you lucky. Presently one of the bystanders stopped him and said, If your god is all you make, make him out to be, how is it you don't keep him and make the most of him yourself? I'll tell you why, replied he. He brings gain, it is true, but he takes his time about it, whereas I want money at once. The Eagle and the Arrow An eagle sat perched on a lofty rock, keeping a sharp lookout for prey. A huntsman, concealed in a cleft of the mountain and on the watch for game, spied him there and shot an arrow at him. The shaft struck him full in the breast and pierced him through and through. As he lay in the agonies of death, he turned his eyes upon the arrow. Ah, cruel fate, he cried, that I should perish thus. But, oh, fate more cruel still, that the arrow which kills me should be winged with an eagle's feathers. The Rich Man and the Tanner A rich man took up his residence next door to a tanner and found the smell of the tanyard so extremely unpleasant that he told him he must go. The tanner de delayed his departure, and the rich man had to speak to him several times about it, and every time the tanner said he was making arrangements to move very shortly. This went on for some time, till at last the rich man got so used to the smell that he ceased to mind it, and troubled the tanner with his objections no more. Fair point. The wolf, the mother, and her child. A hungry wolf was prowling about in search of food. By and by, attracted by the cries of a child, he came to a cottage. 
As he crouched beneath the window, he heard the mother say to the child, Stop crying, do, or I'll throw you to the wolf. Thinking she really meant what she said, he waited there a long time in the expectation of satisfying his hunger. In the evening he heard the mother fondling her child and saying, If the naughty wolf comes, he shan't get my little one. Daddy will kill him. The wolf got up in much disgust and walked away. As for the people in that house, said he to himself, you can't believe a word they say. The Old Woman and the Wine Jar An old woman picked up an empty wine jar, which had once contained a rare and costly wine, and which still retained some traces of its exquisite bouquet. She raised it to her nose and sniffed at it again and again. Ah, she cried, how delicious must have been the liquid which has left behind so ravishing a smell. The Lioness and the Vixen A lioness and a vixen were talking together about their young, as mothers will, and saying how healthy and well-grown they were, and what beautiful coats they had, and how they were the image of their parents. My litter of cubs is a joy to see, said the fox, and then she added, rather maliciously, but I note you never have more than one. No, said the lioness grimly, but that one's a lion. Quality, not quantity. The viper and the file. I mean, that could be, that could go for a lot of people these days. Um, the viper and the file. A viper entered a carpenter's shop and went from one to another of the tools, begging for something to eat. Among the rest, he addressed himself to the file and asked for the favour of a meal. The file replied in a tone of pity and contempt, What a simpleton you must be if you imagine you will get anything from me, who invariably take from everyone and never give anything in return. The covetous are poor givers. The cat and the cock. A cat pounced on a cock and cast about for some good excuse for making a meal of him. For cats don't, as a rule, eat cocks, and she knew she ought not to. At last she said, You make a great nuisance of yourself at night by crowing and keeping people awake, so I am going to make an end of you. But the cock defended himself by saying that he crow crowed in order that men might wake up and set about the day's work in good time, and that they really couldn't do very well do without him. That may be, said the cat, but whether they can or not, I am not going without my dinner. And she killed him and ate him. The want of a good excuse never kept a villain from a crime. The Hare and the Tortoise A hare was one day making fun of a tortoise for being so slow upon his feet. Wait a bit, said the tortoise. I'll run a race with you, and I'll wager that I win. Oh, well, replied the hare, who was much amused at the idea. Let's try and see. And it was soon agreed that the fox should set a course for them and be the judge. When the time came, both started off together. But the hare was soon so far ahead that he thought he might as well have a rest. So down he lay and fell fast asleep. Meanwhile the tortoise kept plodding on, and in time reached the goal. At last the hare woke up with a start, and dashed on at his fastest, but only to find that the tortoise had already won the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Good old one. The soldier and his horse. A soldier gave his horse a plentiful supply of oats in time of war, and tended him with the utmost care, for he wished him to be strong to endure the hardships of the field, and swift to bear his master, when need arose, out of the reach of danger. But when the war was over, he employed him on all sorts of drudgery, bestowing but little attention upon him, and giving him, moreover, nothing but chaff to eat. The time came when war broke out again, and the soldier saddled and bridled his horse, and, having put on his heavy coat of mail, mounted him to ride off and take the field. But the poor half-starved beast sank down under his weight, and said to his rider, You will have to go into battle on foot this time. Thanks to hard work and bad food, you have turned me from a horse into an ass, and you cannot in a moment turn me back again into a horse. The Oxen and the Butchers Once upon a time the oxen determined to be revenged upon the butchers for the havoc they wrought in their ranks and plotted to put them to death on a given day. They were all gathered together discussing how best to carry out the plan, 
and the more violent of them were engaged in sharpening their horns for the fray. When an old ox got upon, up upon his feet and said, My brothers, you have good reason, I know, to hate these butchers. But, at any rate, they understand their trade and do what they have to do without causing unnecessary pain. But if we kill them, others, who have no experience, will be set to slaughter us, and will by their bungling inf inflict great suffering, suffering upon, upon us. Oops. For you may be sure that even though all the butchers perish, mankind will never go without their beef. The Wolf and the Lion A wolf stole a lamb from the flock and was carrying it off to devour it at his leisure when he met a lion. He took his prey away from him and walked off with it. He dared not resist, but when the lion had gone some distance he said, It is most unjust of you to take that, what's mine, away from me like that. The lion laughed and called out in reply, It was justly yours, no doubt, the gift of a friend perhaps, eh? The Sheep, the Wolf, and the Stag A stag once asked a sheep to lend him a measure of wheat, saying that his friend the wolf would be his surety. Sereti. The sheep, however, was afraid that they meant to cheat her, so she excused herself, saying, The wolf is in the habit of seizing what he wants, and running off with it without paying, and you, too, can run much faster than I. So how will I be able to come up with either of you? with either of you when the debt falls due. Two blacks do not make a white. Two, two wrongs do not make a right. Hmm. Um, and with that, I think we're going to actually end there today. We are fairly over the 10 minutes as usual. So yes, we will end there. We are on day 83, I've just realised. We have really pushed through the days sitting in this part of the cave. We are going to be going over to the Halls of Eternity tomorrow once we finish the book. Uh, and we're going to make sure that we actually get into the caves tomorrow um, so that the time stops. <laughs> so for now, though, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night. No matter what time of day it is, I hope you have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we'll be back tomorrow with more of The Longing. Goodbye.